January 11, 2005. It's a day I'll never forget. The tank controls inside me died that day, and the series hasn't been the same since. And that night, the fixed cameras and pre-rendered backgrounds were wiped out in favor of an over-the-shoulder camera and fully rendered 3D environments that would go on to completely change the course of not only the Resident Evil series, but action games on the whole. And here we are 18 years later, back again in the backwoods of España. I'll say it was good to have you back again, Leon. Uh, hello? I'm back too, you know. Ah, yes. How could I forget the lovely senorita? Man, I can't believe it's been 18 years, and we all look better than ever. Si, sí, senorita. And it looks like you at least aged up a few years, so now I don't have to feel quite so inappropriate complimenting your ballistics. Ah, that's right. It ain't 2005 anymore, stranger. Don't want to go getting wrapped up in a whole Me Too controversy now, do ya? Oh, hey there, mysterious merchant. Hi, merchant. Well, I think that's the whole cast, so what do you say? You guys ready to do this thing? Just hold on one second there, pretty boy. I know there's not a chance you forgot about me. Well, seeing as how you like to just drop in and out when it suits your own purposes, I didn't expect you'd show up, Ada. You mean all the times I had to show up to save your ass, Leon? You're welcome, by the way. You know, things could have gone a lot more smoothly if you had just stuck around and helped me through the whole campaign instead of constantly running off to keep from messing up your hair and makeup. Ashley and I had to go swimming around in pig shit and get poked with dirty needles and that sweater dress of yours still doesn't have a snag on it. Ha ha ha! Oh my, I do love a good old lover's quarrel. Ha ha ha. Guys, can we just drop the drama for now and get to our review? See, si, We're not even two minutes in and already this is going off the rails! The cart's gonna flip- Calm down, Luis. I've got this. So let's start at the beginning and talk just a little bit about our first go-round 18 years ago on the GameCube. It can't be overstated just how big a deal this game was upon release. Yeah, the GameCube kinda limited our audience since the console was marketed more towards families and children. But pretty much anybody who owned a cube and had pubes was playing the hell out of us. I specifically remember that there was this guy who was living in a trailer and dropped his last 50 bucks on the game instead of paying his gas bill. His gas got shut off in the middle of January and, with no heat to warm the home, his plumbing all froze. The guy was so immersed and dedicated that he only took breaks to eat and shit. And since his toilets were filled with solid ice, his shit just sat there stinking up his entire single wide trailer. That is the kind of impact we had on the world. And that is what it's all about. It's all about guys in trailers not paying their bills and shitting on frozen toilets? What the fuck are you even talking about, Leon? I think what he's trying to say, Ada, is that people were so in love with the original game that they were willing to sacrifice basic amenities and comforts just to experience it. Thank you, Ashley. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Kind of an odd thing to reference in order to make your point. But it's not the worst story I've ever heard. Well, speaking of stories, why don't we start there? How do you guys feel we did in recreating the story from the original? Ha! I mean, a strange European cult kidnapping the American president's daughter for the purposes of infecting her with a remotely controllable parasite in order to send her back to then infect her father so that the cult leader can then dominate the entire world is already an airtight and relatable plot, so I'm happy to say that we didn't do anything to fuck with that. But I do appreciate the extra bits that were added to flesh some of our backstories out a bit further. And I certainly didn't mind getting a bit more of the spotlight this time. Whoa, are you okay, Luis? Why are you talking like that? Yeah, it kind of sounds like you're not sure if you're Spanish, British, or retarded. I'm fine. It's a stupid AI. It doesn't do particularly well with accents outside of British or American. I think you were right with the third guest, Leon. Ha <laughs> ha! He's retarded. Look who's talking, you raggedy-ass gillipolas. What are you buying? Suerte que no te dispare en la verga. What the fact did you just say to me? I think he just said that you're lucky he doesn't shoot you in the dick. What? Christ, you guys. Is this really what we're doing here, or are we going to actually talk about the game? Let's just move on to the visuals. Now, it should go without saying that we all looked a lot better this time around, given that technology has advanced nearly two decades since the original. But stylistically, I think there's a conversation to be had. I know that, for me personally, I thought I looked pretty cool in Chapter 1 with the collar flipped up on my jacket. Kind of bummed I forgot to do that this time around. Or better yet, you should have gone with an embossed floral design. Take it from the ladies, man! For what it's worth, you guys, I think the visual designers did a fantastic job with all of us. 
They stayed mostly true to our original looks, but made things a bit more practical without making it too mundane. I'll say, though, that wearing heels through this whole thing again has its downsides, but I suppose the whole sexy and enigmatic thing is more important than being practical. I thought you looked amazing, Ada. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, I'd throw a dog a bone. Si, senorita, mi amor. I could see that sweater dress over my bedpost and us doing very bad things under the sheets. Will you guys stop growing your dicks over my girlfriend while I'm sitting right here? Oh my. Who says I'm your girlfriend, Leon? Guys, focus! Enough about growing dicks and boning dogs. We've got to get through this review before we run out of time. Sorry, Ashley. You're right. Anyway, let's just skip past the visual differences, since I think everyone can agree that the remake is easily superior in every way. Shout out to the original, though for holding up as well as it has 18 years later. Let's talk about the gameplay then, shall we? I'll start by saying I can't express enough how grateful I am to be able to shoot my guns without having to stand perfectly still. And the new ability to sneak up on the Ganados and cut their throats out is a nice touch, even if the stealth mechanics aren't quite what they are in games like Metal Gear or The Last of Us. I'm just happy to not be the same level of nuisance that I used to be. I really liked that you were able to tell me when to back off when you needed some space, and not needing a health bar this time around was a welcome change too. Yeah. I mean, it would have been nice if you were able to be useful outside of that one scripted section with the armor. Ellie would throw bricks and shit at the bad guys when Joel got into trouble. I didn't see you doing anything like that, so don't flatter yourself too much. You were still a burden at the end of the day, and you were always breathing heavily for some reason. Even if we walked slowly around a corner, You'd be there panting and huffing like a 400-pound diabetic who just took a difficult sure, crap. David. Hey, man. I was injected with a parasite and scared for my life. Excuse me for feeling a bit out of it. Oh, right. How thoughtless of me to have not considered that you were injected with the exact same parasite I was injected with. I must have forgot while I was in the midst of fighting those hordes of monsters in order to keep you alive. Oh, don't feel so bad, senorita. I found all the heavy panting and moaning to be quite arousing. Ew. Can we move on to something else, please? How about the environment and level design? Good call. I am the ass, but... Wait, what the hell kind of name is that? And why am I just now noticing it? Anyone else notice it? Ha! <laughs> ha! That's been my screen name since the early days of MySpace. So, about those environments. Right. Of all the improvements made to the game, it's the environmental enhancements made possible with the RE engine that are the most noticeable. Where the original game was mostly well lit with vast, open spaces, this time around felt appropriately dark and dreadful, and while the early chapters felt familiar enough, it was once I was inside the castle that I began to wonder whether I had ever even been in a particular room before. Everything just felt more real and lived in this time around, and it made the original feel bare and like it was all made of cardboard by comparison. The level design all felt more natural to traverse, too, and much less of a chore. I could be misremembering things, but it seems like I had a lot less monotonous backtracking this time around, too. Side note, how about the elimination of the QTEs? Is everyone happy with that change? See, si. what kind of button-mashing, mouth-breathing Pelagatos wouldn't be? Yeah, I don't think you're gonna find too many complaints over their removal. Look, can we stop pretending that any of us are surprised about quick-time events being gone? They haven't been a thing since RE6. Of course they weren't coming back. Fair enough. Let's talk about some things that were removed that people might not be so happy about then. I can think of two off the top of my head. One, incendiary grenades. And two, the U3 boss fight. Oh, come on! I bring you a new bolt thrower. You got the heavy grenades now. All sorts of resources and gunpowder to craft whatever the fuck you want. And you're gonna complain about an incendiary weapon not being available in a game where none of the enemies are particularly weak to fire. I'm not complaining, Asput. I'm just saying that some people might not be happy about the omission. Some people. And who might these some people be? They're everywhere. Have you ever been on the internet? There are people in every corner of the earth who will literally complain about anything. Oh, yeah? Wasn't it you who just said that nobody was complaining about the removal of QTEs? I said you wouldn't find many people. I didn't say you wouldn't find anyone. Guys! 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 Enough bickering over these grenades! I want to know what this U3 business is all about! I'll be honest, I don't remember that encounter from the first game. Is that like you 2 with an extra Bono or something? No, it definitely wasn't that scary. I'll be honest, 
It's been a while since I ran through the original, and I'm ashamed to admit that I don't really have a strong memory of that encounter. And I guess I can expand further on that and say, honestly, one of the things that didn't work for me regarding the original game was basically everything that happened after the castle. I know that many fans still point to RE4 as being the pinnacle of the series, but I'll admit that the emphasis on action over horror really started to lose me once I was ducking machine gun fire from pseudo-zombies. And I think that's what I enjoyed most about the remake. The whole island section felt like it pulled that sort of thing back just enough for me to thoroughly enjoy it this time. Yeah, it felt like a more consistent experience for sure. So is there anything else you guys want to cover? What about the side quests? The thing with the blue medallions is back and expanded, but there's also the pest control and mini-boss hunting to earn you spinels that can be traded for special items. I mean, that stuff was all well and good. It's a nice addition, but it's not something worth spending a lot of time talking about. Most of the items in the special shop I could take or leave. Not a bad optional time waster, though. Ha! Fuck you, man. It's all to earn you quality items, mate. I even sell those precious gold tokens that you had so much trouble earning the right way through the shooting gallery. Oh, you mean those little charms that are supposed to feel earned but are actually predetermined? Yeah, not that big a deal. All right, guys, we're starting to get real nitpicky here, and we still have to get to questions from the audience. So let's just give our overall scores so we can keep moving. Let's start with you, Leon. On a scale of 1 to 10, what are you giving this one? Sorry, Ada. I'm not the type to give out numerical scores, so I'm giving this one an S rank. Ooh, that seems like a much more appropriate rating system. I concur! S rank. Luis, how about you? I'm giving it a strong... A. After all, it would have been better if I'd survived this time, but it is what it is. No complaints otherwise. I'll go ahead and agree with that. Assignment Ada and Separate Ways are both currently missing. And even though they are both sure to show up in the form of DLC, I'm ranking the game as it exists as of the time of this conversation. It's an A for me. And that leaves just you, Merchant. I'm sorry, that leaves just you. I am the ass butt. That's gonna be a D for me, mate. What? A D? You have to be joking. I can see someone not giving it the highest marks due to personal taste, but a D is an absurd score. It doesn't even make sense. Ha ha! D for dick off, stranger. Those incendiary grenades are impossible to find ever since Covid. What with the chip shortages and trade fiascos and whatnot, bugger off. Fucking hell. Let's just move on to the Q&A section. Ashley, what do you have for us? Okay, so Brenda B has a question for Leon. She wants to know who is the toughest boss you've ever faced throughout the entire Resident Evil series. Not just four. Wow. That's a great question, and it's tough to answer. I mean, I've faced so many worthy adversaries, from Sadler to Mr. X and even Chris Redfield. Pass. Leon, you can't just pass. Why not just answer the question? I can and I will. Pass. Next question. Leon, Brenda B. took the time to write to you and ask you a question. The least you can do is show a little appreciation for the fans. Brenda B. simply typed a single sentence on her smartphone. You're making it sound like she sent a handwritten letter inked in blood and sent a goddamn pigeon across the globe or something. But fine. You win. My toughest boss is Brenda B., who clearly just won't go away. I bet her profile pic is some stupid butterfly or something to hide her stupid face, too. Ha ha ha! Stranger. That's pretty harsh, don't you think? Eat shit, ass butt. It was you who put me in a mood to begin with. Let's just move on to the next question already. Jesus. All right. This next one is for Luis, and it comes from Steve Weeb. Steve asks, Which sucked more, getting stabbed in the back by Sadler, or getting stabbed in the back by Krauser? Getting the knife from Krauser was no fun, but at least it was just a knife, and not some big phallic, veiny thing on a stick. All right, Sadler then. Moving on, we have Dope Smokin' Juggalo, who wants to know what happened to the incendiary grenades from the original. Oh, come on, mate. Fuck off already. Just kidding. He wants to know which game, if any, would you guys like to see remade next. And I guess that's a general question for everyone. Bah, who cares? It's not like I'm going to be in it, so why should I have an opinion? Honestly, if Capcom is going to keep remaking the classic titles, there's only a couple that even make sense. It's got to be either Code Veronica or the very first game. The 2002 GameCube remake is still phenomenal, but it would be really cool to experience it with the same modern treatment as we got. What about 5? It's the only one that makes any chronological sense. Ooh, I don't know. That one might be considered too racist for today's audiences, don't you think? 
The game was never racist. People just cringed at the sight of a white protagonist gunning down and dismembering black people. And yeah, that sort of thing would be pretty racist if Chris was just going over to Africa and shredding through the local population for no good reason. But just like I had to wipe out a bunch of farm-dwelling Europeans and Wesker's kid had to tear through a bunch of Chinese people, we did it because they were infested with mind-controlling parasites and murdering everything. Yeah, I remember when Left 4 Dead 2 came out around the same time, and people were complaining about a lot of the zombies being black. But the thing is, the setting was in and around places like New Orleans, which has a pretty significant black population. It would have been weird if there weren't any black people, and honestly... That in itself would have actually been pretty racist. Yeah, and never mind the fact that two out of the four protagonists of that game were black. So that backlash makes even less sense. And see you guys? This is my entire point. Those games both came out in 2009, way before the whole woke thing took hold. If there was even a little controversy back then, it'll be way worse if Five were to get remade today. I've got it. Just race swap all the African zombies to make them white and swap Chris Redfield to make him black. Boom! Problem solved. Ha ha ha. All right, you know what? We veered way off from where we started, and I'm afraid if we keep going down this path, we're going to wind up in the abyss. Anyone have any parting remarks they want to make before I close this one out? I don't think so. Nope. I think we're done. Good. And with that, I'll just say thanks to everyone who tuned in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let us know if you'd like to see us do another one of these later down the line. Leon out.